What's up everyone, welcome to today's video, welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel, thank you very much for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about Gotham Knights and the player base that took the time to master the combat systems and a lot of their own opinions and perception of the game. Now, this is something very important about the entirety of the game because I think from a combat standpoint, when you're playing an action game, that usually weighs in more than a lot of the other aspects of the game. Not saying that the other aspects of the game are not necessarily important or interconnected. I'm just saying that your action, your combat systems usually come in as the primary marker of how good you perceive the game to be because a good game is a subjective matter. You could think a game is good and other people could think the game is not as good as you think it is. Elden Ring and Ragnarok being the cases in point just from the recent past. Now, the select player group in terms of the player base that mastered Gotham Knights combat, at least to the extent of one of the Knights, usually have a very high positive reception of the game as a whole. What I've noticed is, for the most part, I'm not saying it's everyone in both cases, those who did not take the time to master the combat usually say things like, the combat is clunky. Now, this statement, I've made a lot of different videos showing Unreal Engine 4, even showing different aspects of animation speed, the way they program animations for combat systems. I'll link a video for you guys in the description. And some people still came out of that, even when you're showing them like, hey, within the engine, this is how they decided that they were gonna take some of the mechanics of the game. Some people still cannot wrap their minds around why the developers decided that that combat system was what they wanted to do. And to me, I've seen it as some sort of a simplistic and a reductive way of thinking that doesn't want to grapple with the in-depth aspects of the video game because it's not really, or I showed in that video anyways, that it's not really a matter of like knowledge of the design, but design choice that the developers wanted to take. And I think this is bringing the entire conversation, you know, full circle because just on Twitter a second ago or a few minutes ago, I saw that somebody actually posted something regarding uh, Forspoken. And this was the parkour mechanics that are actually in the demo. This person said, man, it appears that a lot of people have missed out on what the parkour mechanics actually are, and they figured it out by button mashing, and it's probably on the devs to have actually clued people by giving them, say, maybe a small tutorial about these mechanics that are within the game. You see, here is the issue of balancing and a fine line of not holding your player's hands too much. You're deciding to trust the player whenever it is you're actually having them engage in some of the mechanics. Gotham Knights is one game that trusts you to actually engage in the mechanics of the combat. I see now why they decided, even though it was a really weird and wonky way to do it, to throw you into the situation where you actually go farm all these different crimes with your different knights to get your heroic traversal. They were trying to maybe put you in a forceful way into that system where you kind of picked up some of the combat mechanics, but the truth is that amount of combat that you actually played in getting your heroic assault probably was not enough for a lot of people, and instead they saw it as just kind of a chore for them to do, and it kind of put them off. But when you master the combat in Gotham Knights, I've seen, for the most part, a huge percentage of players actually have a better and deeper enjoyment of the game. And it's actually the same in many other video games. But the thing is, if the devs usually trust you to do it, basically they don't tell you, it's kind of easy to miss. And so far so good, look very closely at a lot of the folk talking about Gotham Knights or any video game that they're talking about that has a clear picture of its mechanics actually being portrayed. That means basically you can see other YouTube videos of people actually showing it or doing it or just playing the game and having fun in that aspect. And you realize that for the most part, that area of their gameplay or in my opinion, their experience was somewhat missing. I've been playing the game as one night for all these weeks. Just in the past few weeks, I've gone back to playing Robin or just stayed in Robin. And even when I was playing Batgirl, her combat was actually so unique. And there were a lot of deep aspects to all of the, you know, what she brought to the table that moving to another night was very shocking in a sense as to how much more each night is able to bring something different to the table. And for the most part, you're going to find out that out of all the four nights, you probably maybe like only one or some of you like two or three. I like two of the nights. The other two I've tried, guys. I tried Nightwing. I'm sorry, Nightwing fans. I just could not enjoy it i mean i 
I tried my best to perfect it. I tried my best to, you know, harmonize and synchronize a lot of his momentum abilities, but it just was not gelling as I thought it would. Now, Red Hood, I do like, but because of the way his combat is, it is an entirely different play style. I'm not against it, but it is something where I really want to get in the face of everybody, you know, in a sense. And so with him and the way that he plays the most effective, he is somewhat of a ranged brute character. So you can get in their faces and you can do all kinds of fun stuff, but you're just better in terms of, you know, effectiveness playing the character as he's been designed which is where I just put him in number three place for my own favorites. But it doesn't in any sense say to me that the game is not fun, especially when it's comeback mechanics is so dynamic over the course of four different characters. This is the biggest miss for Gotham Knight because a lot of people were coming from Arkham and admittedly, Stefton Hill did mention that in his game, the way they designed Arkham combat, it's easy for you to pick up. Mastery is not necessarily so hard. They put it right there in front of you it's digestible it's a very straightforward combat system in terms of gotham knights nonetheless you really got to dig in and do the work so for those of you who are probably thinking the combat is clunky you got to get back in there you got to change your knights and eventually one of them is going to click with you and i can tell you that once it clicks you're going to not be able to put this game down just easily and so that's pretty much why you see many of us have racked up you know dozens of hours in the game it's just because that one thing just kind of clicked because the main thing you're going to be doing in the game is just fighting bad guys. That's literally this game. This game is superheroes fight the bad guys part one from Warner Brothers Games in Montreal. They could have just named it anything. And so your main aspect of the game really needs to be where it is that you can study and enjoy it. Now, keep in mind that there are some people who mastered the combat and still that was not enough for them. I'm not dismissing you guys. I just wanted to highlight that from what I've seen for the most part, a lot of people who have not necessarily vibed with the game did not master its combat. So that's pretty much it for me. Thanks so much for watching the video. I appreciate you guys' time and audience, and hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.